everybody uh welcome back to another stream or the the first stream here no matter what uh let's dive straight away into it um on this wonderful saturday afternoon we are building a little bit with nox so um let's see and have a look and uh check out what we're doing <music> Yes, wonderful. You see nothing, that's totally fine. We'll jump into the code, which should be also blank for now, and open VS Code to actually set things up correctly. So, there we go. Um, in last stream, we already built a little bit. Um, so, let's have a look around what we did. We have a blog API here, which we um, built last time uh, briefly, that's based on Nitro. Uh, so did a little bit of nitro action here. Let's uh, maybe CD into it, um, and uh, it's an apps apps blog API, uh, and start it with pmpm dev. And uh, let's see what we'll get if we open localhost in our browser, which I'll switch to in a second. Then we see uh, the following. Ah, nothing. It's uh, still black. Let me quickly select it here. And there, well, almost. All right, there we go. Right, so here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Let's take the streaming profile and don't uh, take a look at all the video views that are open here. We have a little bit of Nitro. It uh, Nitro is awesome here. And if we go for posts, ah, uh, um, Let's do slash posts one. Uh, we'll get some content we had the last time as well. So that was that was the state. The content itself is actually coming uh, from some JSON files. So if we jump back to it, then we see, okay, we have some posts one here um, that we didn't use. We moved it to assets post one. So maybe let's copy that over uh, and remove this one. And um, if we refresh now, we have exactly that content here. So things work as they should. Um, the next part would be consuming the API and maybe before refining what we see if we just hit posts only, because if you only hit posts, you have the slug and then as well, you have lots of things here, right? Also the whole content that we don't really want right away here. So. Maybe we should strip out the content here. We should define some types and then actually consume the API for our next application. And yeah, I think that uh, seems to be a good step. Let's uh, let's go for it and do that. So let's jump back into VS Code. Maybe uh, rename that post here. Um, I don't know, intro into next. We also need a category, actually. That's also important. Hey, Frozen Spirit TV, welcome to the stream on this wonderful Saturday afternoon. Um, yes, so we also need category. Um, we want to strip out the content at some point. The category here, I don't know, let's put in category one. Thanks a lot for the follow, Frozen, TV, uh, Frozen Spirit TV. Much appreciated. HCM Lopez, hey, uh, welcome to the stream. And yeah, uh, you're, you're welcome. Glad you enjoyed the content. I'm always uh, happy if that helps people and I'm I'm super psyched about all the amazing feedback so far. And as usual, if you have uh, any topics that you like, think like, oh, they could be explained better or can we have a little deep, deep dive, then yeah, just uh, suggest them. I'll put them on the list if, if I can do things about that. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I have to get a bit more into that next project here because it's for, as it's uh, written here, my thesis. So. Uh, holding myself accountable. I thought, why not doing that also in stream so I can see uh, me doing some things. Uh, how about you? Uh, how, how is everybody? Yeah. yeah. Learning a lot from you and Daniel's friends. That, that's perfect. Um, that's, I think, also what they're there for. Uh, and I, I also liked it a lot. Like, uh, I would also do a bit more open source work on stream, uh, which I simply don't have the time for right now because of the thesis, talks coming up and day-to-day -day business. But uh, I think tomorrow might be one of the days, uh, depending on how far this will go today, uh, that I might have some time for some next PRs uh, and some improvements, because I have a little bit on the list there too. Um, but okay, uh, Frozen Spirit, I'm fine, thanks, that's great. 
happy to hear that. Uh, by the way, do you know that we uh, get some of the H&N uh, types bug last time with Daniel? I had to go after a while. Yes, uh, that's a bit difficult because um, it, yes and yes and no. So apparently it it was it is a Volar bug, um, but then also Daniel dove more into um, the whole scenario of like how do you actually augment the view types, uh, and then Poswa also jumped in, jumped in and Edward and Daniel were talking. And then you had to go in as well. So this is like, he reported quite some bugs. Uh, I think this is because it works fine uh, or like a little flaky, but usually fine uh, in uh, Naxi type check that it's still a volar thing. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it stayed with the report. I mean, I can quickly have a look. Maybe I have the link saved somewhere um, because I remember he definitely submitted that to the to the Vue.js language tools. Um, there, I'll put it on the browser. Here we go. Yes, so this one and yeah, also uh, maybe a linked one. So that was the the most actionable thing that were there. Oh yeah, of course you're you're welcome. Uh, then then uh, Daniel rated Josh. We had a little. A uh, good time talk with Josh. It was also fun. Then I also had to go. So yeah, things things are happening. Um, oh yeah, view TSC and and Volar. That's super interesting because with normal TS it works. But yeah. All right. Um, let's get back to it. Here, uh, let's switch back to VS Code. We have a category, and maybe we should start adding some some types. So because technically you want to use these types throughout all the applications that will come up. So I'll just go for types.ts, very, very simple. Um, and let's uh, have a few types. We have type blog post, maybe. Um, we have uh, a type um, block categories because they can be fixed for now, which is just um, category one, uh, category two, category three, that's fine. We might need some slugs for them. Um, because they should be, uh, there should be pages as well, but we'll see. And we get that over and have a look. So let's see, where does that uh, bring us? Okay, we have title, it's a string, we have author, that's a string, that's perfectly fine. We have date, that's also a string, it should, it could be a date, but um, let's just do it as an ISO uh, date string, yeah, ISO. 80,601, do a little JS doc on top, or TS doc in this case, we're fine. Um, we can actually remove these. It doesn't matter much, but uh, yeah. Well, let's format that in the end. Uh, can even remove the double quotes, but it's also fine. Um, excerpt is also strings, also necessary. Category, you have that here. Maybe, yeah, maybe a slug would be nicer and then mapping them. We'll see. I'll leave it as a string for now, or maybe, maybe just do block categories for now. And content, that will be a block post content block, which we will define now. Might want to export it too, let's see. And we had what we had before, so we have a type. This will be also a union, technically. Um, maybe let's say blog post, blog post content, uh, block paragraph, and then we have type, what we had here, in content, type paragraph, and then just value some text, that's fine. We can actually always do type and value, maybe some extra, we'll see. So type paragraph, uh, and yeah, content is also fine. I can, we can go with value or content, doesn't matter much. Um, my biggest gripe has been the, the ability to invalidate cache-based CMS changes. For example, if I have SSR next side, when I want to invalidate the cache, if a change is made in the CMS, do you have any recommendations around this? Is using stable value validate, it's always hard to pronounce, is it a better approach? Um, it's tricky. So, okay. Let's stop here for a second and uh, and go that go a bit uh, deeper into that. So we have Nitro, 
right? And, and Nitro is, is the server image of Nux. We know that so far. The best part here is Nitro has an excessive caching section, but okay, you can define caching through the route rules, or you can use this cached event handler, and you're already using that, as you said, with, with some cached things. Um, now, the biggest question is exactly how to invalidate that cache. So cache invalidation is a tricky part. The good thing is, if you if you don't use the route rules, but if you use a cached event handler, you can do that. So down here, I'll link in the chat in a second, you have uh, should invalidate cache. It's a function which returns a Boolean to invalidate the current cache and create a new one. So that's something. So you, what you could do is, okay, if you know for some reason that the cache has to be invalidated. So if you, I don't know, do a call um, to, to that endpoint with uh, some parameter or something, then you could check that. So you could use that. Or if you say it shouldn't be validated, but in this case should be bypassed, think of a, a preview mode, then this should work. The problem is you can't set it in route rules. You have to do that um, through this uh, define a cached event handler, mainly because the route rules has to have to be serializable. So you can't pass functions in there, for example. Um, but there, let me quickly go in here. That's the Nitro repository. There are topics about, okay, how to uh, invalidate the cache. I've seen a few issues around there. Um, so there are a few, also I think discussions as well, like, okay, how exactly um, could we maybe like um, just expire them in general? Um, the big point is, oh, interesting. Maybe it only works as bypass right now, but we can check that. Uh, oh, there's this issue for me as well, which I think is, I've seen somewhere here as well. It doesn't matter much. Um, so what you can do is if you cache them all, for example, through a file, then you could say, okay, just delete these cache handlers, but it's also a bit risky. So um, I was talking with Puya a little bit about it, um, not like super recently, but uh, a while ago, about like, okay, how can we maybe support better cache invalidation? Like, I don't, I don't know, can we call a function that could invalidate some cache in Nitro? that's uh, independent of the endpoint. Can we do it with like webhooks and so on and so on? There, there are lots of ideas behind that. Uh, it's right now, it's sadly just on you to implement. So uh, at the moment, I think the easiest would be trying out um, should validate cache, uh, should bypass cache. And um, if, you're, if you're keen on it, you can technically uh, remove the files that are created. When, when there is a cache, because if it's saved to the file system, of course, if you save it to, I don't know, uh, if you cache it in Redis or anything, you can do the manipulation right there as well. Yeah, I think uh, I think that would be my go-to right now. I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah, interesting. Did I see... Oops, one sec. Didn't I just see... Uh, oh, yeah. That was closest duplicate. No, it was not as, as duplicate. Okay, I'll just link here. Cache not invalidated in development and code change. Yeah, let's uh, check that. But that's that's just um, that's just this. Uh, thank you. Yes, I've been following a couple of the issues. Nitro. Yep, exactly. I will try the function, see if I can provide any feedback in one of the issues. Yeah, please, please do so. That's um, that's very important. Like uh, we're we're trying to to try each all the issues to make sure. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for the for the follow. Um, much appreciated. Yeah, we we try to like try each all the issues, figure things out. There are few with pending try it, of course. Um, and there is there is lots of work doing behind the scenes with uh, documentation, especially for H three, because I know it's a bit uh, it's. It could be better right now for sure, and we're working on that. Mainly, uh, actually, Puya and Sebastian, and I'm also very happy to contribute more to the docs as soon as uh, the initial scaffold is up and running. That's more than just JS docs. Oh, Milos, hey, yeah, welcome. Uh, I did the PR for Versal invalidation. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, let's uh, have a look. Uh, Versal cache invalidation. Um, nope, maybe just Versal. Okay, there are a few here. I uh, wasn't merged already. Probably it was, huh? I've seen this one. 
Feel free to link it, by the way, if if uh, you you have it around right now. Because is it feed for cell? Should mm, that's just the ISR one. Yeah, yes was merged. Okay. Uh, interesting. Experimental database layers. Yep. It's the experimental. Okay, then it's closed. Let's do is merged. Um, is your, let's see, is your username also the same as in, as on Twitch? Ah, okay. Support. Ah, yes. But by token for on demand stack regeneration. I see. I see. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, that makes that makes totally sense. Even though it's like vendor specific, which of course Nitro tries to support, but also to avoid, so we can I didn't have all functionalities in Nitro itself. And if we I don't know switch from vendor A to vendor B, let's say versus Netlify or AWS to GCP or whatever, we don't uh, we don't need that straight away. So we can just run it still. But uh, it's it's good to have that nevertheless. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, docs feedback, and then merged. Perfect. Great job. Uh, always happy to see contributions to open source on landing level. So that's that's amazing. Great. But yeah, uh, actually, you know what? Let me quickly note it down um, because I, I have already a video on ISR planned and I think it would be very nice to have a look into uh, invalidate Nitro Cash at current situation. So why not? Awesome. All right. Uh, I'll jump back straight away into the Nitro API that we uh, were, were building. But if you have any questions, as usual, please keep them coming. Very happy to answer them. That's what the streams are here for. So we were about the blog post content block paragraph. Um, OK, we have the type paragraph, we have string. Then we have a blog post um, yeah, content block image, which also makes sense. Same idea here. Code, I don't think we will add some code because that's complexity we don't need right now. What we would need is um, a link would be nice. So um, that's that. What else do we have? Yeah, image, text, paragraph. And that's OK. Yeah, link, I think wouldn't hurt either. That's fine. I got a question if you're up for it. It shouldn't be hard. Yeah, uh, please bring it on. Bring it on, Milos, of course. In the meantime, let's just create a big union out of these. And there we go. And here we have these types. We will augment, or like, no, we will not augment. We will set them uh, ideally here. So get item um, blog post. And that's fine. We could also auto import them here, but I think we're good like this. That should be fine. And then we know that this blog post here is returned. And here we, oh yeah, I remember that was a little bit messy. But it works. Uh, because we replaced the key so get this luck. Yeah, exactly. And here we wanted to, yeah, strip unnecessary data, only title, excerpt, offer, and so on, so on. We'll do that. All right. Um, we won't do it in get items because this is the most plain function we have. So let's just map here. And just say, you know what, we have, of course, the slug and the value. And eventually we will return the slug. And um, as value, we want to return well, everything else they had, right? So maybe const value without content. So we just do content is uh, underscore. And here we return that as the value. Uh, 
Wait. Oh, of course. Let's try it that way, that looks better. Oh, hello Esteban, welcome. Welcome to the stream, nice to see you around. So I will also increase the font size a little bit so you can actually follow a little bit better. Sorry if it's, uh, was it too small before? I think like that should be, maybe one less, maybe like this is fine. If somebody has issues with font size, please um, just write in chat, bring it on. All right, so now we should have the value of our content. That's correct. We got these. And then we're fine. Um, all right. That's great. So the rest is fine. Some more, con some more text, some more content. Um, okay, with the categories. Yeah, that might be a bit trickier. Like, we probably want to have some category assets here as well. So let's, I don't know, categories. Um, category one for Jason. Dustin, first week of internship. Oh, yeah. Uh, how, how was it? How was it going? I saw that you got one and um, I'm, I was very happy for you. So that's amazing. But yeah, first first week is like, I remember when I did that uh, years ago, like, okay, tech setup and it's like everything. And oh, yeah, you have to do this training and there, get into this, that. Uh, so yeah, curious, uh, curious how it was going. In the meantime, let's bring up um, the block category here because we need a type tag. We also need a slug. We just go for string. I think that would be the easiest. Um, and then we just use that here. Oh, wait. Wait, you can hurry. There we go. And yeah, we can add some description if you want to, but that's it. That should be enough to show the category page. All right. Uh, also very important to mention, this is it, by like, it, this is intended to not use next content. We could easily use next content, get all the markdown ready, but because this will be used for some benchmarks later on. With, this is why it's named SR benchmark, as you can't see here on top of my, my IDE, but um, there you can see it. Uh, that's why you want to rate. Yeah, sure. Uh, always, always happy, uh, always happy for rate. If, if that's uh, people interested in software development, why not? All right. Um, yeah, let's uh, just define a very simple category like we did here. So let's say name is uh, category one slug. We don't need to do the slug manually technically because we could just infer that. Oh, wow. Star Ansible. 56 people. Thanks a lot for the raid. Much appreciated. Whoop, whoop. Amazing. Yo, welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh so, well I, I appreciate it so much thanks everybody welcome hey uh i'm alex i work on uh, some ssr benchmarks so some web development with uh with nuxjs let me quickly show it in the browser real quick so nux.com uh, is a framework based on vue.js and the idea here is i i use nux to build a little bit of a blog i don't use any external modules so really really bare bone uh and the oh Oh, we know next. Oh, easy then, easy. And sorry for my mod, uh, mod bot kicking you out. <laughs> Are you Dutch? This is very important. I am. I'm so close to Dutch. I'm in Amsterdam actually. So if, if that counts, if that counts, then uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm, I'm German. <laughs> oh, so sorry. No, it was it was just a warning. It was just a warning. Uh, switch to next just ha 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 yeah um I, jokes on you I, I will do actually in, in for that project like not only we'll build with next first we'll build the same thing in angular next actually so yeah it's it will happen oh try to add me on linkedin yeah add me on linkedin um that's uh happy happy to connect there actually so why not uh I don't know if it's socials here, but maybe let's see. 
we go there. Oh, it's not, but well, you you figure from there it's also on here. Uh, there. Let me quickly copy paste that link in the chat. <laughs> Happy to connect with everyone in your local underground IC server. <laughs> yeah, well, um, been there, done that. Not anymore though. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks a lot uh, for raiding <laughs> Docs in my Twitch. Well, um, that's that's not a that's not a secret though. All right. Um, oh, question in chat. Milos saying, okay, let's say I'm in fetching to do's from a Nitro API route. Yes, to do ID, e.g. API ID get. When I replace the ID on the front of an actual value, I don't get the types anymore. I have a good guess. Why does the found issue to replace ID on request? Okay. Uh, so, no, um, this should work fine, actually. You know what? We'll do this real quick. You know, why not? Uh, answer that question. Let's jump into the Nuxt application we have here already before we were on a plain Nitro application. So let's go into block Nuxt, start this one, and let's say we get here id.get.ts, right? This one. And here we just create a Nitro event handler. Very easy. A thesis. Yes, a thesis. I am. Um, writing uh, a thesis in computer science right now. The thesis tagline, uh, oh yeah, I need actually an API, it's right. The thesis tagline is, um, oh God, a comparative analysis of SSR capabilities and <laughs> JavaScript frameworks. It is a long tagline, but it exists. Um, and yeah, so TLDR benchmarking com like various JavaScript frameworks with regards to service that rendering capabilities. That's also why I built it here. Uh, otherwise, I would never build a blog by like pasting in some JSONs and don't use like Nuxt content straight away. Yeah, yeah. All, all theses have to like they have to sound a bit fancy. In the end, what I also do is like I figure out which frameworks to test and uh, um, then benchmark them on a server. But the most important part is to get them kind of equal and build a meaningful application. Like, sure, I will bench a Hello World, but who cares about the Hello World when you actually want to see if your I don't know, 500 components application works well. And um, the devil's in detail there. My Hugo block still works perfectly for two years. Oh, I'm more than sure it will. My HTML and CSS block also works fine after probably 10 years, but um, and it's it's a fair choice. Hugo is not a, not a bad tool. If you don't need interactivity in service, like, in, in, like an SPA, of course, I get that. So understandable. Um, yes, we have... Uh, API, let's move that in here. Okay, and let's just return, um, I don't know, we we have um, the parameter by use router param event ID, and then we just return the ID here, because why not? So, and you say when we now go, for example, on index.view here, and we don't uh, do that, uh, instead we just say slash API, slash we should get full type completion here right away right yeah slash api slash id so let's do slash api slash two then data well if you don't type it to any straight away it should give us the right one so you know, that works fine for me at least um if we do const id as two and insert it here so like this you mean then it gives unknown IC. Um, with a template string, it should work though. So like with a template string is fine. Otherwise, I think it's really hard to infer uh, the correct uh, pattern for TypeScript. So that's that. I hope that answers the question. Uh, if not, feel free to spin up a repo, send it over and I'll have a look. But like this, even though of course ID is a number right now, uh, it would still work. We could put in anything here and the, the pattern should work. Because otherwise, if it's not a template string directly, I mean, ID could be slash whatever, 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 and that will be tricky. So I think that's that's the way. All right. Uh, working on a solo SaaS, I'm the backend guy. I've got one person for front and one for sales business. Very that I'm overkilling enterprising too much if I want to microservice everything and run it in Kubernetes. AKS from the get-go. 
Uh, yeah, I also have a very strong take on that. Um, scalability shouldn't be the first thing that really is important. Like, I mean, think think it that way. If if your servers are burning for some reason, then that's good. Of course, you might lose some customers, but is it does it make sense to like over engineer it from the get go? Of, of like, you could probably just say, hey, let's let's up our server at wherever. Like for example, Hetzner or if you use uh, Google Cloud or AWS or whatever platform, just say like, okay, throw some money on it if you get uh, more customers, right? So I think that's um, that's a big deal there. Like the product market fit and creating a good product, uh, product is more important. So, yeah. Uh, oh. My main problem is index and a lot of things in Elastic. So scaling with index in just parts of the prior. Oh, okay, I see. I see. Yeah, exactly. The, the front end could be easily run. Yeah, that that's of course that's a bit trickier. If I, I don't exactly what uh, the project uh, or product is there, but even then you could say like, okay, um, you can probably um, like go to go to some kind of uh, host where it's easier to scale it up or make a more simple infrastructure from get go. Um, oh yeah, my, my thesis title was how can, insert name of product, uh, utilize a centralized logging solution, distributed tracing to identify problems faster across multiple microservices so they can meet their SI requirements. Oh, wow. That's also a fancy, uh, fancy title. Um, and I wonder what the results were of the thesis. Maybe it's still online. I'll have a look. Um, Quantum asks, so what are you going to be benchmarking next against? Anything solid based? Yeah, um, that's... That's the, that's the difficult part, uh, as I don't have much time, actually less than a month, to finish the thing. And in general, like, I, how many, or let's let's break down the test setup. The test setup will be, thank you for follow. The test setup will be, uh, you have uh, three frameworks uh, of choice. So Vue and Nuxt will be one of them, like not Vue purely, but Nuxt in this case. And there will be two more, which I will tell you in a second. Uh, thanks for the follow, <laughs> much appreciated. Um, and then we build one Hello World for the baseline, so one application for each of the three frameworks. Okay, Hello World's basic, easy peasy. Um, we do one block application, which we're building right now, and then we want to do one movie database, which should be a bit more of like, um, not just like content heavy, but a bit more interactivity. Uh, and because a blog is a, like, it's not super complex, right? You can build it pretty fast. The MovieDB can be a bit trickier. Uh, and that's the idea here. The problem is that this means already nine applications because three scenarios times three frameworks. And yeah, that's uh, a bit time consuming, plus then benchmarking all of these and maybe even saying, okay, hey, uh, I do another set of three because this is once again a baseline. How do we improve it? Like, I, I don't want to use any modules or packages by default for like image optimization, so on and so. Starting there and saying, what can we use? How can we improve? I don't know, using React server components, uh, using server components in Arcs, then so on, so on, so on. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the idea here. Uh, and I will bench against uh, the good old Next.js and uh, Angular. I was thinking about Solid. I was thinking about uh, Solid and Solid Start. But um, sadly, no time for that. Though I would like to see some numbers on that. The best part is the whole thing here will be open source eventually. Right now, I can't publish it because it's not done yet. Um, but I will definitely... Uh, I will definitely uh, publish that and um, make sure that these frameworks are accessible and people can contribute to it. So, why not? All right. Uh, the results were that the company signed too many crazy SLAs that could not be fixed by distributed tracing logging solutions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fun. 14 seconds of your downtime. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, this is like... That's so many... That, these are quite some nines. Maintaining a PHP plus MySQL application per agony. <laughs> oh man, I, I know lots of people building still amazing things with PHP, uh, Laravel. Um, I, I came out of that corner uh, or of that part of web development quite a while ago. And it's it's a lot of fun. I still like Nux to view a bit more. Otherwise I wouldn't do what I'm doing right now. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's still great. 
Uh, have you looked into Builder.io? Do you have template converters? Actually, yes. I um, I mentioned Builder.io and Mitosis in, in my thesis. Um, the, the fun part is, um, so Mitosis itself, uh, which let's do Builder.io behind that. There we go. Um, Mitosis itself exists. It's a very interesting component library. The problem is that it's still in beta and I don't really want to benchmark into something that's beta or not um, battle tested, let's say. I know I could just say I will take the code and then I will use that. That's true. Um, that would work. But um, yeah, uh, I will see. I mean, if there's still some time left, I, I wouldn't mind checking that. But uh, that's like there. They also have a framework benchmark actually uh, on the get go, but that's also a bit um, outdated, let's say. And they use Mitosis there. I I want to like I want to avoid. Um, these, these dependencies as an okay, let's use code that might not be the most optimized one, um, just from that academical point of view. Yeah. Uh, Angular, by the way, also because uh, Angular without a meta framework, I know there's analog, so uh, props to Brandon Roberts there, analog.js, let's uh, do that. Um, because uh, it's, it's a great framework, but also here, same idea, it's uh, still in beta. Um, they were in the GitHub Accelerator with, with us from Next Team as well. And um, yeah, because the last release uh, is, is still zero point something. Uh, plus, it's not as battle tested as just like Angular Universal or SSR. Uh, I decided to go with that also because feature wise, Angular gives lots of things for, um, or lots of things out of the box already that other uh, frameworks get through their meta frameworks. You can still build cool shit with Perl scripts. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, just saying, uh, Advent of Code, I think, was uh, running a few Perl scripts for a while. I'm not sure if it's still, but yeah, that's still amazing to see. Uh, oh yeah, comment on that solo SaaS. I would start, as I suggest to start with monolithic 100% of the times if you need to optimize different components, break them off, but only do it once you hit the scale. Yeah, I agree. Same, same idea. More important to actually work on a product than on, on scaling in the first place. Debugging Laravel's hell, yeah, it depends what you wanna what you wanna debug. Actually, um, I I usually had a good time with that, but um, I, I also didn't work on I don't know like super huge application Laravel with with Nux though I did, and uh, it's it was still fun. Uh, oh yeah, uh, regarding scaling, yeah, that's the approach I took when working on a similar problem. Uh, the customer monolithic approach can take about 5 million docs per day. My approach needs to be quicker. Oh, okay, USP, I see. But if if that's if that's the USP, then, then I think it's like it's a valid reason to invest in that infrastructure and make sure that it can, well, it can actually make up what you promise. I think it makes sense in this, yeah. I think it's still per, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can still be that, that might be, that might be. Uh, fun thing, awesome. All right. Um, okay, we we quickly uh, reproduced that uh, or answered the question. So let's bring that back here from what was before. And let's get back to category one. We don't need a slug here. We may just like flag, sluggy fire ourselves. We could, we could also do it just for, for the easiness. And okay, just the description here, it's fine. Good. Um, okay. Awesome. Then we have this. We have the categories we don't use right now. Oh, Tony. Hey, nice to see you around. Thanks for the follow. And while we're here, let's um, let's connect that with just the category one slug here. We don't need the title. Uh, because it's all just JSON, there's nothing like super crazy uh, inferred, and we can't really enforce some checks. Of course, we can do it in runtime, but not on, on build time. It's fine. It should be just a very, very simple block um, that we use for measuring then. So uh, that's that. Okay, we can get rid of the whole server part, at least this part again. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions with regards to, to Nuxt or, or Vue or anything, I'm very happy to, to answer them. So uh, can be can be anything on your mind. In the meantime, we use a hybrid approach for one of our products. Uh, right now, it gets about four to five million records per day in and Elastic. Nice. The code base itself is completely monolithic, but we deploy it to be microservice based. In builds that we disable certain modules and generate two documents. That's 
That's clever. Makes sense. Okay. So let's get back to the blog API. Maybe let's just close all of them and uh, see. We want to, I think, check the index route. We have removed the content here. Uh, we could resolve the category, but we don't really need to. It's enough if we have the category slug. That's fine. Uh, we said only title expert author or author would be helpful. That's right. Um, we should also add that here. Oh, we have it already in the blog post here and here as well. Perfect. Okay, title offer date might be needed, excerpt might be needed, category for linking, content could be, is gone. Okay, perfect, that's, that's great. Uh, by the way, I would get, love to get an in-depth view about your repository panel from a point of view. Your video made a lot of sense and learned a lot about use fetch versus dollar fetch. Nonetheless, I'm still trying to gasp point of repository pattern in case we have custom fetch instance. Let's say we have some repository of example of CRUD functionalities that simply return dollar fetch with specific URLs. This is it mostly the same as using dollar fetch with the URL inside script setup what are packages, uh, what are pattern advantages? Uh, I suppose easier reusability, any specific point I missed. Hopefully it makes sense what I'm trying to say. Yeah, makes sense, absolutely. Uh, all right, let's, let's check. Um, the video in question is not this one, not the, 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 this one. Quickly posting that also just in case to follow up. Um, so the the whole point here is the repository pattern can be helpful if you want to abstract away uh, lots lots of like data access URLs. As you said, it's about reusability. So the idea is that I, I had it in a in a customer project. They use um, they use a backend and it's totally fine. And instead of doing like abstracting the way and it doesn't have to be repository. It can also be like just some simple functions that you call, right? That's however you abstract it away, but you want to call a function and don't say, oh yeah, it's this URL when, with like these and these query parameters, filters and so on. Because if it starts like, oh yeah, now our underlying framework updates the major version, like or the backend changes, or we have some API changes, then it starts with like, hmm, what do these URLs actually express? What filters are set where? And how can I map that one-to-one? -one? And right now it really starts with like, okay, you have to do all the work building that first and then migrating over. Because how can you be sure that everything from the old backend is now covered in the new one? So that's that's the main idea of saying, okay, if I have um, uh, a get, for example, then um, it's a bit easier uh, to just say like, okay, this method will stay the same, but internally, maybe even with tests or mocks or similar, I, I can... I can make sure that the method still works. So that's the idea there. Uh, so let's say we get into, let's just quickly get into the code here uh, of that video, which is here. So yeah, we just have a very simple get and it's just a fetch call, right? This is, I wouldn't do a repository pattern for that, but as soon as you have something more complex, as I said, like with filters, with queries and so on and so on, then it, it can make sense. It doesn't have to be that structure. You could use classes if you want to. I'm not the biggest fan of them in, in JavaScript, especially not in the front end. But um, yeah, that's that's the whole idea behind that. And sometimes it's like, okay, you, you have your custom fetch instance, or maybe you compose it even further and say you have some kind of, uh, let's say, um, API fetching library. It's not dollar fetch, but based on that and already includes all the filters. For example, there is that directus next module. And um, yeah, I think it's this one. Yes. So, and here I think they also have various uh, functions. Let's go here and have a look. And here, for example, we have, I don't know, use directus collection. Um, and the idea is, okay, we have Use directors collections. We have that get collection. Then you fetch it. So this is this is a composable exposing these like helpers that you then use somehow to get async stuff, right? Or in use async data and so on and so on. So the idea is a bit similar, like to abstract things that are more complex away. But um, if you do it, like there there are various ways to do that. You don't have to use a repository pattern, but it's it's one way that works. Let's say. 
I hope that's uh, I hope that answers the question, Frozen Spirit TV. All right. If not, or if yes, let me let me know. Okay, this is still a default. Here we strip the unnecessary data. That's that's good to go. We technically could get some uh, by category. We can also just add a new categories root. That makes more sense. Category slug .ts. Same idea as before. We can more or less take that over. Use block category or categories. I think it didn't export category, huh? I did. Okay. Let's quickly reload the window. Makes sense. Thanks. Uh, I need to find a way to make maintainable easy to use with filters and query params. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. It it can be tough sometimes when there is lots of complexity. Uh, complex, complexity. Yeah. Making complexity more complex, typical software dev here. Um, if if your calls are different enough that you say you don't really reuse them, you don't necessarily have to like you don't have to over engineer it. But if if you have re repeating patterns, let's say, then that makes sense to abstract them away. On top of that, everything is paginated, of course, and need to handle that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's the classic. Uh, Point of working with APIs, different filters, different uh, pagination, and so on. I I understand the the pain in a way, but also can also um, be nice. So, okay, missing slug. That's still fine. It's not category. This is I'm gonna post this category, and here we good. So let's say we go to blog API. We do pnpm dev and this should be still uh, up and going. Oh, this shows. Ah, yeah. Now we have to now have to check. Now oh, this gets categories. Category one. This is not correct. Not exactly. Maybe we have to filter that. We'll see. Uh, our message and status message message the same thing. My default would be status message message and status code for throwing. Um, yeah. This is this is a good. This is a very good question. Um, I I usually <laughs> I usually use uh, oops I usually use message, but it doesn't. I don't think it makes a big difference. Um, create error because it all will be passed anyway, right? So an if error status message. We're gonna yeah, yeah okay. Oh, please prefer using message for longer error messages instead of status message. In the future, status message will be sanitized by default. I see. I I guess the point, but I will I will have a look into that. Um, I think the idea is that status message is like let's say you have a 404. And the status status message message is shown on the page, for example, or like from whatever you get. Like um, you show that error, and there's like error code, and then just a short message. And the message is more for explaining what exactly went wrong. At least that's what I can read from here. But we can also have a look into the H3 code. Uh, not Hotel Rotterdam, but um, on JS. And we'll open the blog post link in a second. Let's just go for create error here. Yes. And da -da -da. Yeah, error message. Okay, here's the status text. Interesting. Error message an object containing error properties. And sanitize status message. Oh yeah, here we go. Exactly. Status code, integer for the HTTP response status code. Status message for the rep uh, HTTP status message. So like, I don't know, 404 not found, 500 internal error and so on. And then data for whatever you want to use. And you can use message then, which will be added. Oops, it was right there. Technically, to give the error message. I really like this blog about the subject. OK, let's take a look at uh, URL-based data filtering for old data. Uh, it will be light mode, though, so oh, it's fine. 
or you know what maybe um oh no it's here that's absolutely not better no okay let's let's keep it at that and refresh okay the crowd application has some sort of ui for displaying data from database and most of them have some way of color data that makes sense classic form here very lovely and then exactly we have the serialization of the query there are a lot of ways to represent these relationships it's true yeah <laughs> okay open data protocol interesting interesting and there's a library to parse these oh okay yeah yeah i think these notations are are known for example when you use uh at least a little bit known like mongo mongo like but with Ah, okay with expressions directly this is this is really interesting never came across that oh atinuk sebastian hey how are you doing that's very interesting yeah i will i will have a look at it later on the capillara thanks a lot for the follow i will definitely have a look at it later and uh bookmark that oh data hmm let me quickly open that on my other browser so I won't forget. And how are you doing? I, I'm also great. Yeah, thanks. Building a, a, a bare bone uh, Nux and Nitro blog for later on measuring SSR performance for the thesis, as you know. So, yeah, going well and answering some questions. And yeah, we're, uh, we're building right now the, the API with Nitro and then consuming it with Nux a little bit. And dug into create error of H3 for a bit and data fetching. All right, let's clear up here a little bit. Clean up, there we go. Wonderful. Okay. After getting into that, um, we can get this. We just have to check why uh, categories are also like shown here and vice versa if i check categories okay we don't have that at all also don't need that but let's do category one uh that should work that should work it doesn't right now uh categories log it is categories Rachel jl thanks a lot uh in there, it was fun chatting have a great one going to the, get some work done for my startup yeah best of success uh, thanks for joining and hope to see you uh, next time as well thanks for coming along uh it is categories as assets so that should be fine here it's also posts and we have category dash one so i wonder why that doesn't work we'll have a look oh, oh because it's category typos love it tony hey hey glad you're around okay this works fine too um we have to check for posts because i think the issue was that here i just get no wait here i get all the items yeah that's of course a bit careless uh let's just filter the keys beforehand And say key the key should start with posts. Yeah, we don't need to check for ends of JSON, but uh, that would be helpful. Uh, you know what? Let's do once keys is and let's do it here is raw keys and put them in here. The raw keys. No, put the keys in here. That's actually correct. Here we go. Uh, something related with a full stack with Nuxt on the edge will be very interesting, right? So, uh, we all can't wait what uh, will happen in uh, just a, just two weeks, I think. Oh, not even. One and a half. No. That will be so interesting. Okay, that looks better. Posts are as they should. That's great. Um, we might pre-render all the routes eventually because we can and um, 
because that will remove all um well all inaccuracies for i don't know the api would be too slow or um just answers of different speed so that would be fun uh, yo, while we're here, I had pagination issues for a while now and looking for a solution. Let's say we have a paginated drop-down component with users and it loads more users on infinite scroll. When I select specific users, it's stored in a ref and v model to drop down. No problem is if that selected user was on page three, if I get back to that drop down, drop the data is reset. I'm not sure how to handle displaying selected users because it is not on page one, which is loaded on start. Um, Ooh, yeah, that's a that's a long one. Um, I mean, technically, what you could do is when you go back, like back as in not browser back button, I guess, but back as in app flow, um, and you have the information that the user was there, so you could store it somewhere and then then restore it by saying, okay, you need to load all the data until that and that page. That might not be accurate if you have lots of data and they change, so that's the only downside that. Like you can't really, you, you're not entirely sure if um, if they will be the case, but in most cases it will be unless like, refresh and refresh uh, the data or like if you get new new data and changes. But I think that would be one way. Um, but yeah, the topic of scroll restoration, and loading the right amount of things when going back is uh, is especially tricky with with F uh, SPAs. I I see that point. Yeah, I think I understood correctly that like, okay, you, you choose something, you go to another page, you want to go back and the user should go back on page three and not on page one. So what you could do is save the page user was before and then, um, I don't know, append that automatically, uh, alter the link so it will go there. Keep alive, I was also thinking about keep alive actually, yeah, that could work. Um, that's also a good point. Good idea, Tony. Good idea. I think I'll stand up for a little bit. All right, got to jump. Some work to achieve today. Yeah, of course. Keep up the great work. Get yeah, you too, Sebastian. Thanks for joining. Uh, very glad you came around on that wonderful Saturday afternoon or almost evening and have a great weekend. Don't work too much, also rest a bit, you know? <laughs> Talk to you very soon. All right, here we are. Um, yeah, we could even check that, but it's fine. Okay, we have the categories, we have the posts, we could, here we get the categories, but we also wanna get all the posts. So that will be, oops, that will be interesting because the category is one thing. Let's say posts for category. We technically want to get all the posts. So here we start tagging the review tools already. Um, let's say tools posts. Let's and say <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sebastian. Uh, export function gets all posts and then we have uh, category slug which is optional so of course here we can just say um, give us all the posts or give us all the posts with uh, a certain category and then we can just do what we did before like in here in index anumax3366 thanks a lot for the follow much appreciated we can use that get items here and then, well, technically we can do almost all of that here. Uh, let's tag that over. That's what we more or less want. And we need, uh, whoops, this file still. No, oh, here we go. That get items functionality. Okay, we see that we need it to make async, of course. We need to import the blog post type, which is fine. Let's do import type uh, blog post from types. I uh, want to reload the volar because sometimes I'm not sure why it doesn't recognize your storage. It should recognize your storage. It should be 
automate there, but that's fine. We'll see if it doesn't work. I'll have a look into that. Let's um, get rid of this and then just call, uh, how do we name it? Get all posts. We don't need any keys. Um, yeah, we don't even need to import that, I think, because it should be But we'll see. Um, that's fine. That's fine. I don't need this anymore. Let's see if we still get the posts. Nope. Okay. Ah, oh, it can't map. Interestingly. Uh, so let's let's debug this. This is uh, this is a good one. We can just click here. We have items map and items doesn't exist. Undefined. Probably because get all posts is really undefined. That's weird. That's imported from, yeah, technically, those posts. And, oh, we don't, yeah, okay. Okay, it was all correct. We didn't even need to import it here either. It was all fine. Uh, so you're not using Nux content because you just want to use the bare minimum, right? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Otherwise, I would use Nux content. The main point is that Nux content also requires, okay, we need markdown, and that means we need to parse markdown. So what I want to avoid is um, to measure how good certain frameworks libraries are at markdown parsing, but I really want to measure how good they are in server-side rendering. Um, so at the least amount of libraries possible involved there. So that's all the yeah. otherwise, as I said, I would just jump into next content straight away. Um, that's uh, on next.com, right? This is a, a lovely tool. So also, of course, linking it here. Um, yep, but because it's it's tricky. Otherwise, I, I work with this JSON structure. Also, same with like um, we eventually for measuring, we will not do stakes high generation for the block like the reason is because we want to actually measure SSR performance. And if you only do SSR in build time, not that useful. That will also be denoted to say like, okay, a blog would be fine for static site generation, but because you actually want to measure content and some with like uh, lots of DOM nodes, some of not that many DOM nodes, it makes more sense to choose this rendering mode for the thesis. But in the real world, the blog would make more sense to just steadily generate it. Like I do it with mine, for example. Um, I'm still not sure why that is not there, but that's okay. So let's do a wait, get all posts, and we have a category dot slug here. So let's see if this will work. And then we return a category and a posts, post for category, and there we're good, ideally. I'm really wondering what is the case here. Um, I already I'll use, um, yeah, apps block IPTS config. Maybe we have to open, you know what, maybe we'll open this straight away. Oh no, code, sorry. Let's jump, I'll quickly switch the window. Let's jump straight away in that VS code. What's the, what is the goal of measuring this? Um, the goal of measuring this is like, let's say you have um, an e-commerce platform, right? Then for e-commerce platforms, SSR is super important, but Sadly, uh, I can't just build three e-commerce platforms in three different frameworks and then compare them. Also because then it starts with like, okay, you need personalization and APIs there and this and that. So the idea would be to see without any optimizations, which framework is the best in like, for example, throughput, uh, is the best in rendering the site quick, how's the hydration cost and everything. So um, th the main point is really to compare the frameworks bare bone. Now we could say, yeah, it doesn't matter. You just cache everything. That's that's true. Caching is is very important, and still you might have like some some first hits before um, ISR triggers, right? That's our service side rendered then, or oh yeah, you do SWR, it will be refreshed in the background, but there might still be like the one first user, and some things you can't really cache too well. So the idea here is really to to measure and see what frameworks are good and what, and maybe even dig a bit deeper and say like, okay, why or what could be improved. Or like in the case of Nux, like, okay, we do it bare bone. 
And then maybe you can just do it all as server components. We don't need much hydration, maybe except for the links, right? So in, in these scenarios, um, it could be nice to see the hydration cost uh, is, is super low when using server components, and that works pretty well compared to the, the bare bone um, where review actually has to hydrate the content. So it's really more of a comparison than see um, what, let's say, what frameworks could even improve. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that as well. I see some crazy front ends that are very unsafe and crazy take 15 seconds, but because low phrase in the front, it's sub. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, like, caching is, is always smooth if content is cached, but um, that's, especially in e-commerce, I've been part of several projects where uh, this, this simply doesn't work, right? Like, okay, you get new data, then you can, of course, uh, redo. Why is this really not loading? I have no idea. I will check. Uh, why is, I don't know. Um, you can't just like rewarm all the cache entries and that's that's the tricky part so while while you can mitigate 80 percent probably uh, also for seo super important if google loads your site fast or not right and then starts with like hydration costs you even if you cache the results you still have the cost of hydration so you, your user gets the html from the server and and view next for example or react next or angular and so on they still have to um like take the HTML and basically transfer it into their representation, for example, view with a VDOM, and then make it interactive. So, and the time between, oh, I see things and oh, I can click, if that's the lowest of possible, it's best for the user. Like I've seen it so often, and also there were quite some uh, threads on uh, uh, Twitter about that, with like, oh yeah, the website is lying to your user, you see that button and you can't click it. And, and that's true, that definitely happens. Like it's, it's a common issue, like, oh yeah, um, there is a button and it doesn't work on maybe bad connection until the JavaScript is loaded and parsed. So that's also something to consider, of course, when, when choosing a framework. Um, plus, that is of course not the only thing, there are lots of other requirements, but um, it's, it's still something good to know. I work for a Shopify store and the amount of changes to product data also invalidates cache all the time. It's definitely a valid concern to find the best SR framework. Yeah, yeah, um, that's, that's a really good point. And also, that's that's the thing. Like cache invalidation, is, uh, for a reason, it's a difficult part, right? Like, let's let's say you have let's even say you have a web application, and you say, okay, some product data changes. So which caches you invalidate? Yeah, sure, the product detail page, but what if the thing is now sold out? So you'd have to invalidate all the categories that appears uh, as well. So you have to uh, you have to go through for certain steps. Uh, same with with like if you build a web application and you just change code on, on one place and you want to ideally only validate a small part, but there it starts. You have to build some kind of dependency graph and saying, okay, this tiny piece of code changes and that might be a component. The component is used in page or like let's say the component is used in another component. So where is that used? And a whole tree spins up. So yeah. And, and eventually this is also very important, a big disclaimer in, in the work that I will submit in about a month. SSR performance alone is not the most important metric when choosing a framework, of course, if, like, given that you need SSR, otherwise it's not even that important. But it's still something to consider, right? If you say like, okay, I don't know, I have the choice between, let's say, I don't know, Quick City and Solid Start, and say like, okay, we want one of these. Or, I don't know, Angular and Svelte. So like, okay, let's have a look. One of these uh, will be our choice because uh, we have people proficient in both, we have pros and cons for each, and yeah, then, then maybe the performance is, is one point if your application is performance critical. Okay, I still don't know why that get all posts here is uh, not where it should be because this doesn't make much sense, but it's fine. For now, for now it's going. Maybe, you know what, let's start this here and uh, I think I will quickly uh, switch the window here to oh one sec this one there we go so oh ha hello hello my dear that works perfect yeah I just have to be in right folder uh increasing the font size a little bit for you maybe one more nah maybe like this that's fine Okay, 
Good, we have the categories. We jump back in the browser, check that again. We have the posts that works. Let's check the category, uh, category one. Maybe just do categories, it's a bit, we do all plural, so let's uh, keep up with this. And here now we have the category with the posts. Very important, we also don't really want the content here. This doesn't really add because it's category preview, we don't need that, so. Maybe let's uh, let's add another post util and say uh, function get all. Maybe we could add another parameter. Nah, it's fine. A post uh, without or get get posts without uh, content. Uh, also, here we could just give the categories log. Can actually be the same. Yes, const posts is wait this exported function is async as well. I'll put it to the top. I really am a fan of the newspaper style, uh, like writing code. So the let's say the most abstract part is on top, and all like the helpers are a bit bit lower. That doesn't always work, of course, especially if you do like uh, arrow functions. It's a bit eh, tricky. But um, yeah, mm. can we avoid fetching off this? Actually, no. Maybe let's just add a maybe let's just add a helper method saying, uh, or we can even keep that here, and just say function remove content from posts. And yeah, this is still not correct. We have blog post here. That's better. And then we just map. E, and then we do exactly this. That should be fine. Could even line it here, but it's not necessary. So we have this, then we say return remove color from posts, posts. And get all posts should return, oh really? Oh yeah, because we do that. Okay. I see, because it's already that way. Mm. Yeah, we need a key. Then we do get items. I wonder why can't the slug... Yeah, in this case, the slug could also be just part of that. Mm -hmm. Not entirely sure. We have the slug extra here, and then we just get the blog post here. It's not the nicest approach ever. Uh, it would be nice if the slug would be part of the blog post, if we can just create that. So maybe let's add export type blog post with slug. Let's just blog post and slug is just a string here and let's say we get some yeah let's let's change it a little bit around i think that makes sense so we say const slug is the thing we have here the key is definitely correct then we say const post is this and then we say return um, well, we can just do post and slug to make sure this matches. And then we say get items basically returns promise blog post with slug. So that will be promise all. Okay. Why not? This is everything from post, which means this should be a blog post. And it has the slug, which is a string. Yeah, okay. That's strange. Because we basically just say, hey, this is a blog post, and we have the slug as a string as well. That should be perfectly assignable. Anyway. Um,
And yeah, we don't have to do that. We can just return items here. And items is posts in this case. We don't even... Oh, we need to fill... We don't even need to filter these here. That's fine. We just have get all posts. But this should be... We have the key. The slug is definitely a string. And the post we get here is a blog post. And... I mean, we don't have to type in here even that. Let's say const something. Yes, it means promised at all. Okay. And we just don't have to cast it because it's correct unless there is something. Something here is the promise with all of that. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Easy to spot. It should be an array, of course. It's correct. Okay, we have this. We can pass in the category slug here. Um, so we say const items. Let's get items. If you say if there is no category slug, we just return items. Otherwise, return items.filter. Um, of course, awaiting that would help. I, I dot category is category slug. Yep. And then we are good to go. Then we're good to roll. So here we can even just say it very, very simple. Keep it as clean as possible here. That looks fine. And in here in the slug, post slug, okay. You could even get that, but it's okay. And in category. So here have the category then we get all the posts here then we put it in and we're good and ah, one more thing we need to do get all posts without content because we don't want get oh get all posts without content sorry we really don't want um, the content in there. All possible content is undefined. Get all posts without content. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, this doesn't exist. It's in here. It's an export. No, we don't do that. Let's quickly restart, but it should be there. Or did I export? Did I import get all posts before? Nope, not import at all. Get all posts without content. Yeah, okay. Great. We're here. All right. Um, I spare you all the details of writing a blog post because this is really not the fun part. Instead, we will just uh, go into the next application because I think right now, there's not much more needed for a blog post. Sure, we can start with like we add an image and so on, so on. But this this will happen later on. So let's just open the blog next application and uh, jump into that and see what we can uh, achieve here. There we go. Lovely. Okay, yeah, we need some types, of course. Also, uh, last time we already set up the proxy, so that's nice. In here, we have the route rules. We might add next image later on, but let's see. We don't want to use that much with regards to optimizations. We'll just keep the images ready. Very simple, if we need some. Um, we just proxied localhost 3001, because that will be the, the local instance. Um, of our Nitro application and of our API. It would be nice though, later on we should configure it for runtime. I like uh, even talked about it early on, but that's okay. Let's just start this and see where this is going. And also start, of course, the Nitro application. So this actually runs on 3001 and we can uh, get some things. And here we go. This is the content that's great. 
we have a link here click that and here we don't see anything and because why um post block of oh yeah because it doesn't exist let's do const route is use route const um slug i like to wrap in computer i know it's not necessary but it gives me a little bit of uh peace when i don't have to work with reactive straight away let's see there we go data's there um we're good it works we can now nicely render stuff so we can say i know h1 um, this should also give us a blog post and we can import that import blog post and this is a bit messy right now but we will do that nicer later on also import just type blog post of course and now we can just say okay h1 here we have data title and then we have h2 yeah if data exists right yep yeah. Um, we have error or we have not data we just do this uh, we don't use something blocking so that's fine uh, we just render error just in case there is an error and then we do a template with uh, VLs why we use a template here mainly because I don't want additional DOM nodes for that so of course we could use a diff but then it would be in one extra diff doesn't matter too much but we want to keep it comparable so here we have some block title that's great we're good um we can have now the interesting part comes right the content uh, i don't know like the offer and um the date of it we can even wrap that in i'm not sure if that will work Yeah, okay. Do ISO string or something for now. Okay. And yeah, now the interesting part starts with uh, data content here. Because we have these block types, right? And uh, we did it actually, we did it in the last stream last week, Saturday, uh, no, last week, Sunday, actually. So six days ago, we did a little bit of that. Are we... Um, Maybe, I, you know what, I'll just, I'll just showcase that right now because we did it here. Also nice that this works. Still very happy about that. We also built it earlier. Um, oh, just, just jump to the code here. So what we actually did is we added um, the notifications a bit nicer. Where, where is it? Uh, nope. Okay, strange. I'm um, more than sure that we merged that one. Anyway, um, it should still be in the code, so let's see. Notification. It's not. Oh, oh that's not good. Let's double check. No, we didn't. Uh oh, that's really not nice. Did I close the PR by accident? That's strange. Because we updated this in 127. What did I do there? That's weird. That's really strange. Anyway. Um, I, I will. I will take a look at that later on. Let's uh, let's have a let's have a look in the browser again because the idea there was that we render uh, certain uh, notification contents and then it also can have like a a text uh, and a type. So let's say a type is text, type is link, and if it's link, you should render a next link or an anchor tag, or whatever. And if it's text, it should just be text, right? We did it last week for sure, and apparently I accidentally closed that PR here, which is not nice. Um, but you know what? Okay. Let's, let's quickly jump into that so I can actually deploy that, um, before we 
continue the next application here because this will also be next application also a blog funnily um, but it would be very nice if we could uh, if we could fix that so this is a bit strange I, I reopened the PR already I think and it has come some conflicts so let's check that out uh, let's just get the code okay weird really weird. I, I'm, I swear I merged it anyway um, Let's merge main into that. This failed as we expected. Um, let's check navbar first. Here. Oh yeah, I think I just removed the P2 and that, yep, that's fine. So we can accept the current changes here and we're good. No, wait, that's not correct. Accept the incoming changes and we're good. Yep. Anything else? That's it. Package JSON should also not be too uh, tricky. We added a few things. That's okay. That's fine. So here we can use the current changes. And we're good. And for the PNPM, the best thing is to remove it, install it again. And hopefully it will be in there. Okay, yep, that's fine, as specified. Why is that a uh, duplicate object here, really? Oh, then let's do it like that. Weird, but good that the linter told me. Yeah, we don't need to bump anything. Install should work as before. Let's quickly resolve that. Okay. And here we go. Okay, we can wait until these previews are uh, ran through. Hey, Fun Ling, thanks a lot for the follow. Welcome to the stream. So let's see, this should run through and give us um, the deploys. Yeah, they're processing that's perfect we will revisit it later and actually merge that eventually because that worked pretty well weird that's i i think i just closed that because i thought there were two prs open so oops sorry for that because i think there were yeah here there was another pr for that and i, I it was a bit confusing for me like i reviewed it earlier uh, but he closed it back in time okay that's fine um, yeah, we, we don't need to wait for that uh, for too long. Um, and we'll jump back to our application in the meantime and revisit it later on. But the whole idea, why I mentioned it in the first place, was that we built more or less something like that already. And the good part is not too tricky. We just throw in a little bit of if and else, or v if and v else, and we're almost good to go. So let's give it a try. Also because we can do it here, we can add an extra component for that. I think an extra component would be nicer because it's a bit isolated and the classic thing of like, okay, we don't write everything in one function also for a reason. So let's add another component and let's call that component uh, blog post or post content. How about that? Post content.view, not an app in components directly. We create a new uh, view component and we define props, of course. And we define the props and say, hey, content should be blog post content. Also there, um, I think that's the easiest to ensure we rely on that type. If there will be more, we don't have to update anything. That's lovely. And I think that's almost the boring part. Now we could say we create one view component for each blog, like, blog post content block type. So if we jump in here again, we have these blog post content blocks. We could say one for paragraph, one for block image, one for block link. If there would be, I don't know, more than five, more than more than three even, I would consider that. But Or if there would be substantial logic for that, I would consider it. But right now it's more like, let's write it down. Let's get going with that and then we'll see. So also very interesting 
we have an array anyway, so we have to loop over and we will do it in template. Also here, sparing some DOM nodes. And we say we for block in content, right? And now we say, okay, you know what? Exactly. If you can do p tag, say if uh, block dot uh, type is paragraph, that's not a problem. You could put in a p tag. We could also say, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, okay, let's just render the text here. Very simple, but the text exactly. Uh, oh, it's value. I think we changed it. Um, then the image. So we say we have an image. Oh, headings. We forgot the headings, actually. Yeah, that's fine. And it's a link, right? So do a next link here. Be else if. Always be else if. Um, block the type is link, and then we just render the value under good. Oh yeah, for the link actually, this is a good point. We don't know. We we need some more than just the value here, or we change we change that in a bit. So let's maybe hit it up here because the value can't be a string. The value would have to be URL and text, for example, or href and text, or two and text, or whatever. Uh, we can stick with URL and text, it's fine. Block the URL and block.text or block the URL so we can uh dot value. Always forgetting dot value. Okay, we have blog instead of block, also tricky. Yeah, I would make text optional for sure. Because if somebody says, like, you know what, I just want to have the URL as is, that's the way to go. All right. Let's maybe update it in our uh, blog post in, in the other project. I will um, I will quickly do that. So, oh. And I see that you didn't see much. I'm sorry for that. I hope it did switch. The automated scene switch is a bit of a mess. Otherwise, recap. We uh, have the Block post like we don't use it here right now, so let's just use it real quick. Block. Uh, let's say post content, and then we say content is data content. Perfect. And in that content, it looks like this. We define the props. Very sorry for that. We define the props just saying content comes in. Lovely. We rent like we loop over this with a template. We uh, have our p tag here. We have the image otherwise and the next link. And we will uh, see how that looks like in the browser right now. OK, let's check. I expect some errors. Oh, it's, we didn't, oops, we didn't really uh, start our application again. That is something we should really do. And while this is happening, I will switch back to the browser and see what's happening here. Okay, some text content is there. We have a, a link that a uh, link, uh, an image that's broken and it's fine. But is this everything? Let's see what um, what we got. Let's see what uh, our next dev tool say. For example, um, I will make a little bit smaller for that. Because our the, deck, the next tools are, are pretty pretty helpful, um, especially when we check out the, the payloads. So here we see we have some text content that's great. Then we have an image somewhere. Uh huh. We have some more text content, an image, and some more text content. Okay, this is not rendered. Most of them are not rendered. We have some text content. We have this is broken. It's okay. But this is not rendered at all. So we have to check why. I already have a feeling. And the feeling is related to a key. So let's do that. It would be nice to have some kind of key for these blocks. I could say, okay, they have to be uh, unique. It's one thing. We could also say, yeah, um, let's take the blocks and just give them some kind of ID. 
I'll, I'll do something very un, like something I don't want to do because this is not how much you should do it. I'm just curious what will happen. They set the key to I, so to the error index. Not that nice. Let's see. And it still is not there. Interestingly, though, no, no errors or anything, right? And if we check what we get here, you have some blog title, some author, some text content, lots of other things, and then the image. So something's off here. Oh, because <laughs> nothing's off here. We're just uh, incapable of writing that because it shouldn't be type text, it should be type paragraph. Then we can also let go of that weird thing. Uh, paragraph. Fixing that real quick for you. Looks better. Then we can remove that area index because you should never do this. Don't don't do this. Okay, things are rendering as they should. Awesome. The image is broken. That's fine. We have a hydration error. No, we don't have a hydration error. That's good. That's just a property I that doesn't exist. That's also fine. Let's close the next DevTools. Render it one more time. Uh, maybe. Oh, it's still there. Oh, because it still set the key. Maybe just uh, for fun, let's take uh, that image here. It, yeah, it should be fine. And check. This we will check in a second. First we finish this. I will quickly put that in, you don't see that right now, I know, uh, into the blog post. And we'll refresh that and see what happens. And hopefully it will just render, yeah, perfect. Nice, lovely. This is also a problem to be fixed. Like I don't want the images to be rendered in full size necessarily this is a bit creepy like well just staring my own face anyway uh it works that's the most important part here um probably i will also ensure the images have the right sizes first of all so we can assume images are optimized without optimizing them or doing any uh, advanced things later on but uh, this is where we are right now we have the header and the footer. We didn't really do much with them. They're basically empty. So we could do like a you know, header here saying, what's h1, please? Um, I'll take AP, my block application in Nuxt. And footer should more the same. Saying, uh, try out the other projects and then links here. So we'll just add it to do things here later on. Mm. Or maybe try the other projects or I don't know, see uh, the code on GitHub and read the thesis or something like that. I don't know. We're good. We're good with this. Nice. And if we check, we have this here. And we have this here. There will be better styling. We will do a bit of Tailwind. Um, Maybe not today anymore, but we will do that. But so far, we can we can render stuff. We can write blog posts and JSON. Uh, things looking good. So let's quickly allow to have a look into these because the deploys, they work all this perfect as it should be. We take a look at the deploy preview straight away and we take a look if, uh, oh, live now, but didn't say any notification, I think. That's not correct. Because we added, yeah, we added that as well. Um, okay. Testing, let's test this. Perfect. Oh yeah, I even said it. Okay, never mind. Okay, this works. This works. We're really good. If I don't use the ref, we'll also show up. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. We can click here, go to the stream now. Nice. Okay. Uh, this is not. This is this one, yeah. This is correct. Uh, and improve. And improve notification component. Let's put it in the title as well and is missing. Okay. Oh, we're good. This is merged. This will 
appear eventually. And you will see that as well. Because right now, as you've seen here, no notification comes up for that, but it should with this PR, it will. Okay. Very simple check. Uh, so, uh, one more question to answer, by the way, before, because I just saw it on Discord, someone asked, uh, let's see, we go to Nuxt, Nuxt, for example, and says, um, oh, it doesn't, it, uh, it's like it showed a bug tab here somewhere, maybe not, in, ah, probably not in the profile, because I didn't, I don't have it installed. Yeah, there's a great, we'll do it right away. Uh, there's a great thing called Refine GitHub right now. Uh, it's been out for ages, but it, it is it is amazing. So you can install Refine GitHub to uh, get lots of nice GitHub features. So if you're into open source or if you're using GitHub regularly, which probably most of you will, just install Refine GitHub and you will see amazing things like, um, let's say, yeah, okay, I need to set a personal token. That's true. I will wait, I will show you in a in a, in a different browser tab because that's a bit easier. I will set the token for that next time. So let me quickly switch it for you. And let's check out the next next discussions here. For example, here you see box 105, right? Something like this. Um and that's really good because well. Um, it's easy to click here and you say, okay, these are all issues. They're technically just filtered by the label bug. Uh, you can do way more with this. Um, you you could, like, for example, see the most important or like most upvoted uh, thing in an issue. And this, there is none. But let's say uh, most thumbs up or something. Maybe here. Uh, also no highlight. Okay. In some, definitely, like, if there are enough... Um, if there's enough traction, maybe you can take a closed one. It uh, it shows like, oh, that's the that's the most voted answer uh, here. Oh, what a what a coincidence! Yeah, please don't write me too. Same issue here. Is that leave a thumbs up or uh, similar? So you can see these real quickly, especially because they're right there, and then you can jump in. So Refine GitHub is lots of amazing features, and uh, it's really worth installing. That I can only suggest you to do so. I will link this in the chat also right away. Um, probably just the refined GitHub page here, or something like this, because most of you probably will use Chrome. And here we are. All right, it is already 10 past six, which means uh, it's slowly dinner time, slowly but surely. Uh, first of all, though, we uh, we'll have one more look if we need to do something else. Like we need to do with some, okay, what's, what's left? We need some styling. That makes sense. We didn't do any crazy optimizations. We need to pre-render or at least cache and then warm up the cache for the API. So that would be nice. Um, I wonder if there's anything else from top of my head. Like we, we want to build a little bit more complex things as in um, we need to improve the header a bit, we need to improve the pages, or the category page. Maybe that's one thing we could quickly do. Show the right category, show a list of categories. We probably don't even need to list, but it would be nice to, to have a link to the category. Let's, maybe let's do that. So, we do categories, and we have a slugged view here. We want to show that. It's very similar to post in the end, but it's a category, so let's do blog category. I don't think I will. Why did I export this? I think we don't really need that because it's yeah, it's it's fine. Um, Kruger two zero one five two. Thanks a lot for a follow. Much appreciated. Okay, let's quickly reload roller here on this because I'm not sure it will pick it up already, but it's fine. And here, no, here we not go. Extension host. I learned it recently um, that you can. Reset the extension host and never restart. Restart extension host. Let's try this. Made it work. Otherwise, we'll do a quick reload. But no, it works. Perfect. 
So let's get a block category here. The important part is we didn't fully type that yet. We need a block category uh, with posts. And maybe we should also add a block uh, export type blog post without content. And that's once again the thing like, okay, um, with slug, but without content. This is very expressive. I would not write that necessary like this, but we're, we're going for it here. We do like a, technically this is um blog post from file. The other thing is a proper blog post and so on and so on, but we'll do rena renaming another time. We will clean it up once again. Anyway, we need to have posts here and posts should be blog posts with slug, but without content. This is absolutely correct. Mm. I think when we have, this we should have, we have the block category, yeah. Then we have data, that name I think it's called. And then we can do a little preview, which we'll do later on. We haven't done that so far. We just do v4 post data.posts and just log the post title here. So um, block category with posts, true. So this will happen. Best trigger ever, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, let's see if that actually works. We have one category uh, up and we will have a look in the browser. So we do like uh, categories, category one, error 404. That's correct. That's absolutely right. We have to also check categories here. And here we are. Nice. So now we can even link that. So we do a bit more. We could even say, you know what? Let's put put in the next link here to slash posts uh, plus data dot slug. No, well, post dot slug, I suppose. Yeah. And do this. So now you should even have that and it links. Perfect. It's a very simple category page and we're good to go. And of course, as I mentioned before, this is just an example. I would of course like to build my blog as I did before with next content, but for the thesis, this is necessary. And yeah, other than that, uh, I think we got a, I think we got a, a few things done here today. Um, I, I will go on tomorrow um, around the same time. I will aim for three, I think. I will post it, I think, right after the stream. So tomorrow, once again, um, starting from three, maybe to six, maybe to seven, we'll see. Something like that. Doing a bit more on here, but also uh, finally going through some uh, issues on Nux Nux because there are a few things that I am assigned to and that I really uh, want to... That I really want to finish because there's soon a next release coming out. So there are a few things here. This one is this one still needs details, so we don't want to tackle this, but this will go and hopefully if there's time, also this one. So this one should be something. Uh there is a PR already open for that. It's just in draft mode. I hope I can take a step on that tomorrow because right now the CI is failing, but the functionality works, so it shouldn't be too long to go. And this one. Could be a bit trickier, but we will see. Uh, lots of discussion on the two. Uh, happy to link these around. And um, yeah. Now, as usual, or let's let's just keep a blank page because that's a bit uh, nicer for the eyes. Um, are there any questions? Uh, any any thing related to new view next? I don't know setup. It doesn't matter what. Um, let me know uh, right away. Happy to do a little answering uh, Q&A as usual at the end. Um, so yeah, if there's something, that's the moment. Uh, that's the moment to answer uh, and to ask, most importantly. I have more tomorrow, haha, but what is the uh, status regarding the use query problem? <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, fair. Use a query process. We'll open that again. I actually just linked it. 
Um, you mean uh, use rock query and use rot uh, params? This one, I suppose. A bit more composable for that. Not sure if it's the best, but it almost works. Yeah. Um, I think it's fine. Like, you can you can just use use rot params and use uh, rot query from view use. They're also available. So I, I think that's that's a really legit way to go. As I also mentioned here, I'm also putting that in here for reference. So that exists. Uh, in view use, the problem is that it doesn't use navigate to, so it doesn't work with uh, external uh, links. That doesn't work uh, in some scenarios. But as long as you do on the client side, it should be fine, right? If as long as you change these things on the client side, it's good. If you only build an SPA, you don't need SSR. That's the way to go. Um, other than that, yeah, I was talking a little bit with Eduardo. I will probably hit him up during uh, view Amsterdam uh, or maybe before, because. There are like there is an RFC for that for sure. So there like uh, uh, no wait wait there is an opportunity for an RFC for sure. So that would be something uh, I should do. The thing is of course the time part, but um, I I think that's that's very reasonable. The point Eduardo makes in the whole uh, thread here is that. Um, Right now, if you would do the same on the service-side rendering side, so like, let's say you change the, the route params during SSR, this is something that doesn't work right now out of the box um, with, with these composables. And it's not that easy with how Nuxta does, if I understood correctly. So the, more or less, the, the point here would be either changing behavior in Nux, which would be a bigger thing, um, finding a workaround in Nux, which would probably uh, away, or as soon as that use router params is something um, that is RFC'd and actually something that will be part of your router, then write some next logic around it, which might be the best version of that. So technically, RFC would be the way to go. So yeah, that's uh, that's the state on that. I just need something to keep some state in your like pagination page filters so, and yeah, uh, that's the whole idea of this. I I am planning, uh, or like, wait, let's let's start different again. I was planning on making a video on how to track state um, in the URL properly. The problem is with that issue still being up. I don't want to do like some give us some half cooked advice saying you can do it on the client and your server have to do this and this. So tricky, a little bit tricky. Um, which means I, I want to fire up the RFC first, get some feedback, and uh, hope that that will be something that could land in the future and then make the next integration of it a bit easier. So yeah, that's that. Yeah, I, I will definitely share the RFC. I, I hope that will sound great too then, but um, that's current current situation on that. Any other questions so far? Anything else uh, on your mind? Uh, thanks a lot, by the way, for, for all these great questions. I think there are, there are some really good ones there. Um, so yeah, please, uh, if, oops, no, let's switch back. If there if there's something on your mind. Uh, as you said, uh, more tomorrow, that's great. I'm very happy to answer them all. But uh, also if someone else feels like, oh, hey, there's something I, I really, really want to ask, or is there something you could uh, show us then that's the option. Otherwise, um, it will be tomorrow or later or whenever or next video. I think a lot, but I got to fill the question. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. It's also sometimes tricky to answer very detailed ones. I, I know I still uh, owe uh, an answer to a few people, but they're like really, let's say there, there's some complex question, not just like, oh yeah, if I, if I do this and this doesn't work, can we check it? But more like, here's the whole setup and Okay, I think then it is uh, a great time to take a look and check out someone uh, to, to raid, actually, I hope. Um, yeah, I'm not locked in here. Nice, lovely. Then I will, uh, I will choose someone real quick. In the meantime, uh, yeah, as I said before, thanks a lot uh, for, for joining. Um, very, very 
uh, very happy to see all the people around. And um, I hope to see you all uh, the next stream, which will be uh, tomorrow um, around 3 p.m. Uh, CET. Just so you know, that's roughly uh, roughly the point. If it will be later, I will announce it, but that's, that's that. And now we'll see uh, hold rate. I probably uh, aim for Nate. Thank you for all effort and community sharing knowledge. I'm, I'm, of course, very happy to give something back as well. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that you all like it and that there is uh, there's that much good feedback. Like when I started, I, I didn't expect it would be like, oh yeah, uh, this, this would go so well. So absolutely. All right, then let's uh, do it. I hope I hope I can even rate because I'm not a Twitch affiliate or anything. So let's try. I think I am. Uh, yes, that looks good. Okay, folks, it was a pleasure. Uh, see you tomorrow again. Have a great time. And now let's go over to Nate. Go, 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 go. Everybody.